Paddle to Seattle is a three-month expedition documentary where Josh and I get a chance to interact with wildlife, characters, and a lot of times just the two of us on this amazing journey from Alaska to Seattle. We had this idea plan. We knew we were going to paddle to Seattle and see kayaks. So we did a little research and the first company that I saw and the best looking boats and the most comfortable and, and just spacious boats that we saw were the Pygmy kayaks. We decided it was the best thing. So when I got back to Alaska, um, there were two, two boxes with uh, the kit for the boats. I'm waiting and I started building them. It took two months and it was my full-time job. We paddled two pygmy cohos and they were they were designed for a trip like this and touring. Uh, they had a lot of a lot of space for gear. We were carrying we were carrying quite a bit of extra gear uh, besides just camping and food. We had like, four different cameras to document this expedition and a plethora of batteries and chargers, solar panel. Uh, and we were able to pack everything safely inside the kayaks. If you put your hand under it, is that your hand? Yeah. Look at the finger. But it does have epoxy and fiberglass on the inside and out, so that's what's supposed to make it strong. Still not really convinced yet. We'll see how they do on the water. Yeah, and I couldn't get over like how light they were and how thin they were. And I remember thinking like, oh, these are beautiful boats. They're super light. They weigh 39 pounds each. But, you know, we're going to be in these boats for three months. We're going to be crashing on rocks. We're going to have to be landing on barnacles. I don't know if um, these boats are going to be strong enough. And, and sure enough, they were every bit as, as tough as a plastic boat. come to Juneau, Alaska, you gotta either fly or take a boat. We decided to take smaller boats. It's more fun this way. It is, dude. We never had to make any serious repairs to the boats. We never punctured or put any holes in them. We never gouged through the fiberglass and actually into the wood. Um, the only repair I remember making was just a string that broke that held the seat back up and that's just typical wear and tear, you know, we pack for things like that. It looks and it sounds like a, you know, a, a super hard, difficult trip and why would anybody want to do this? But for us it was, yeah, this is our dream. We, this, we want to be out in the wilderness for three months. We want to be hanging out with whales. We don't care if we're camping. You know, some days it gets old, some, you know, you have cranky days in the office. Um, but we wanted to be out there. It was a vacation for us. But we always wanted to be more than just two dudes in kayaks. We wanted to, to get a chance to, to talk to folks about the live in the Inside Passage and to see why they live there and to, to understand the animals that live there and the ecosystem and the tides and, and really capture with as many angles um, as we could what it would feel like to hop in a kayak and paddle for three months from way up in Alaska, across British Columbia, and back in the United States to a very big metropolis. What I really hope that the film does is to inspire folks to go on their own adventures. And there can be a lot of trepidation with hopping inside a, a kayak for the first time and, and, and biting off something, something big, something that you didn't think that you could do. But you just really have to take it one day at a time. You know, we're just going 15 miles today. The next day we're just going 15 miles three months later, um, you'd be amazed how far you could go. Yeah, I say if you got a dream, just go for it. <laughs>